Irina Pilipchuk, you are Director of Research and Market Information at INREF. Thank you for joining us on BTV. Thank you for having me today. Uh, we are uh, starting 2024 with uh, the 2024 Investment Intention Survey that was published just last week by ANREV, INREV and PRIA. It's a, a very much followed uh, uh, study that comes out every year. Uh, and this year, uh, I quote, European investors are the most bearish on expected allocations with a substantial 43% expecting a decrease in allocations and only 16% expecting an increase. That's what the study, uh, one of the many uh, uh, learnings from the study. Um, how do you explain in the uh, the lower appetite of, in, of European investors for real estate uh, compared to their Asian and American counterparts? Um, I think there are several factors at play. Uh, and I think first and foremost, uh, we need to put a, a kind of European investors and North American investors, um, to group, group them together against the Asia Pacific investors who are uh, in many cases are still developing and evolving their European uh, real estate portfolios. And I look in for more diversification globally as well. Uh, so they are still under allocated to real estate in general. Um, they also, not in all markets, had the interest rate environment like we did have in Western markets. Um, and therefore, the denominator effect that is really affecting particularly European investors and the North American investors is not as much at play. Uh, of course, the mature uh, European investors with very high allocations to real estate are feeling the pressure from the denominator effect because the equities and the fixed income markets have corrected so sharply and so swiftly. So that's one part of the uh, dimension. But also some with the very high allocations are kind of holding and reviewing where the sector will be in the next couple of years. Mm. Uh, and another very interesting uh, uh, teaching from this uh, survey this year is that uh, while investors were clearly shifting towards core strategies as a, at the same time last year, uh, the survey shows a sharp uh, reversal as riskier uh, value-added strategies now appear in the uh, to be their preferred choice. Uh, how could this uh, this shift, sorry, uh, maybe? Uh, higher up the, the risk scale, uh, translate in terms of investment priorities and choices uh, in 2024? Well, I think it's uh, echoing many memories uh, from the previous crisis. It's uh, it's a well known that towards the end of crisis and as markets recover, uh, those new investments and fund vintages tend to perform very well. Uh, we've seen that uh, immediately after global financial crisis. And if I look at the IRR performance to date, of those funds that were launched immediately after, uh, they continue to outperform. So I think the shift uh, to higher risk strategies and particularly value that add, but also opportunistic is natural. Um, I think that the, the kind of change, of course, is that there will be more hands-on, um, either very active bottom-up asset management or repurposing and repositioning. And I think that will probably play out differently in different markets. Uh, also, given the current cost of that, uh, for some, uh, maybe private equity play on the more opportunistic side uh, may be uh, also the case, uh, given some of the current players may be struggling with meeting their financial obligations. Mm. Okay, thank you. Um, maybe to, to finish, uh, I have to ask also about their uh, investment priorities in terms of a typology of assets and market that they will be targeting, because at the beginning of 2024 is really not the same market environment uh, than the beginning of 2023. Um, having in this new market environment, what, where do you see uh, investors uh, looking to deploy their capital uh, in terms of uh, sectors uh, and uh, geographies? Yeah, maybe it was geographies first. Uh, we see a return of the UK in the first position quite strongly after six years of absence. And I think that kind of echoes the fact that the level of repricing in the UK has been more significant, uh, about 22% on the all property level um, at the fund uh, level uh, index, um, versus Europe continent where this has been at around 14% or thereabouts. So that's really attractive. And that goes in hand with the fact that it's a large 
market on a global scale. Um, so I think that plays out well for the UK, also for Germany as well, given it's a very large scalable market. Uh, we also see a lot more interest coming through for the more uh, kind of Southern European markets, particularly Spain and Italy. Uh, they moved up the ranks. And I think that kind of goes hand in hand with the fact that some of the structural shifts around particularly residential, uh, but also industrial logistics and student housing are now playing catch up with, the, with in those markets as well. Um, and in terms of sector, it really is beds and sheds. So residential is in a very strong first position for the first time in the history of the survey. Uh, at about 90%, uh, very closely followed by industrial logistics. You know, those are the two sectors which are supported by long-term fundamentals, structural shifts in the portfolio, and also some expectations for potential rental growth and undersupply. Uh, we also see quite a big move towards all things living, such as student housing, healthcare, and so on, uh, with offices still in the third place uh, at about 52%, which is quite a drop, uh, but really being caught up by student housing at about uh, 45% and healthcare at 35%. So that just is significant given the relatively small size of those markets. And what is very clear is that retail is very much out of favor. It's in the last position with only 16%, uh, but maybe also an opportunity for more contrarian play uh, who you know can see uh, in within that uh, segment an opportunity to buy at a discount uh, the so unwanted asset uh, class at the moment. Irina Pilipchuk, it's always a pleasure to have you. Uh, thank you again for being our guest uh, on uh, BTV once more. Uh, also, thank you all for joining us, and we'll see you soon on BTV. Thank you, Lucatian.